So Supreme Court's really been on one lately, y'all. They're cutting a transparently conservative Christian ideological swath across our country's legal landscape, totally unconcerned with making a single lick of goddamn sense along the way. It started last week with the concealed carry case in New York in which they said, you know, states don't have the right to decide things like this. And then later on the matter of the most important decision a woman could ever make, they said, we'll just leave that up to Mississippi and them. It'll be fine. On the matter of overturning Roe, they said, you know, the Constitution doesn't say anything about a woman's right to an abortion, so we got to give this to the states. Like, oh, really? Yeah, the document written 200 plus years ago, mostly by slave owners, is not super big on women's rights. That's weird. (laughs) You think maybe it's because if you went back in time and asked any of those guys who were coming up with that stuff, excuse me, I have a question. Do you think a woman should have a right to, he's going to go, let me stop you right there. (laughs) No, no, I don't. Who is this guy? No, this is the past. (laughs) We hate them here. Right? Like, if this court's going to be hell-bent on having the landed gentry of our nation's history determine our laws today, well, I hope Clarence Thomas knows his life's going to be pretty goddamn different. Huh. All right? But no, it's shameful, and now women will die. Unwanted children will go uncared for. This country will get r- worse, and it will be their fault. But hey, at least they don't have to feel a little bit bad when they drive by a picture of a baby on some bullshit billboard in the Bible Belt anymore. <laughs> right? So after a week spent arming the populace and oppressing our nation's better half, this week the court turned its attention to what truly matters in this country, assistant high school coaches praying on the football field. Now, I know we were all anxiously awaiting this decision, a case that was a loser in every court across the land, by the way, until this troglodyte tribunal took it up. And they sided with the coach. Side note, I looked into it. The team he was coaching for when he was doing all this praying, they were terrible. They lost almost (laughs) every game, which is funny to me because I picture the coach in these prayer circles like, "Uh, Lord, sorry, us again, still in the cellar. Uh, Gave up 48 points tonight. Just kind of wondering what's going on up there. Meanwhile, Jesus is like, dude, I got famines and shit. It's all so ridiculous, but of course the court is using this case to erode the separation of church and state, which is ironically something the aforementioned founding fathers were super in favor of, but of course that doesn't matter here because this is the Christian right we're talking about and cherry picking is their national pastime. (laughs) So they said the man has a constitutional right to kneel peacefully on the field, even if it's in protest. And meanwhile, Colin Kaepernick's like, I'm sorry, what? What was that? (laughs) Really? Wow. Okay. Yeah, black athletes, I guess next time you're going to kneel peacefully and protest on the field, you should tell everybody you're praying that those cops will stop brutalizing your people. Then maybe the Supreme Court will be on your side. I'm (laughs) kidding. That would require integrity. No, they'll tell you to go f*** yourself because this is America in 2022 and hypocrisy reigns supreme. Love y'all. I love you too. (laughs) That's right, Crowder, everybody. That is a great point about the kneeling. Oh, yeah. So Colin could have saved himself so much trouble and sadness and grieving and hassle and, uh, you know, ostracizing. He could, all he had to do was say, I'm praying that the police stop brutalizing my people. Uh, And if he would have said that. It seems ridiculous, but I bet it would have changed the conversation for them a little bit at least. No. Because he's right. The hypocrisy is what they do. It is It is who they are. It is what they do. They, 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 they literally cannot see one of these things is not like the other or these two things are exactly the same. They can't. They can't do it. They can't make themselves do it. They won't do it. It's, it's, just, it, 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 it's just crazy. I mean, it's, it's madness. It's Stockholm Syndrome. It, 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 you are owned and so... Now you're all resentful at your ownership being Clarence Thomas. He's your owner. And so now you want to bully other people below you or next to you so you feel big. This endless sewer of, of, of garbage that we are literally drowning ourselves in. It's, it's, it's unbelievable how low people are willing to go for the cognitive dissonance to go away uh, just so that they don't have to think their way through it, just so that they can't 
just so that they they can say religious freedom but not for Colin Kaepernick. Do you know what I'm saying? It's it's so bizarre. It's so strange. It's a, all in the name. Uh, it, listen, we, we are more Catholic now than the Pope. You understand? We are. We're more Catholic now than the Pope because, you know, in the Vatican, they don't have civil law. They're ruled by canon. And uh, you can't have an abortion in Vatican City. But if you got on the metro and you went two stops on the metro near the Vatican, you could have an abortion. Freaking Ireland has abortion. But not here. Not here. And that's why people are going to, you know, people are, are, are literally seeing the writing on the wall. Now, those, are, those people who can get out, they will get out. They're going to leave. They're going to go. And you know who those people are? Um, they're students at our Ivy League schools. They are PhD candidates in our elite schools. They're pe- petroleum engineers and material engineers and math, math majors. And, and you know why I know that they'll leave? Because they were never from here to begin with. Yeah, they're foreigners. They're foreigners. And they used to want to come to the United States to study in the United States. And then hopefully we were able to show them that we were a free and fair and wonderful country with upward mobility and uh, liberty and, uh, you know, freedom of religion, freedom from religion, uh, not, not a place that would discriminate by religion. And that's all gone out the window. And so those students, those people, and by the way, when they, when you come from overseas to attend a Yale or a Harvard or an MIT or any of our elite schools, right? Uh, you go to Stanford as a, as a foreign student, they, they, they charge you full freight. So the universities have come to depend on the 70% of PhD candidates in their schools that aren't from the United States. And we would try to make it so appealing that they would stay here, put their brains to work here, that they would create Google here, that they would create, uh, you know, uh, 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 PayPal here. But we can't keep them here anymore. They don't want to stay here. They want to go, as soon as they graduate, back to the European Union or back to, uh, you know, someplace that, that resembles a free country, someplace that actually is less prone to dying by gunshot. And another thing is they're saying, why did we even go to America to study? Why do we even go in there? Let's go to the European Union. You know, the the European Union is uh, Germany and Finland and North. They've developed higher education that is just world class. And we don't need to go there anymore and risk being shot or risk being called something or 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 or, or having some dumbass in in a parking lot ram their car into us because they think that we're the problem. The damage that is being brought upon us by American Christian extremists is legion. It, it's going. It, it's affecting us in every single aspect of our lives, from our safety, from the safety of our kids in schools. I mean, Sarah Huckabee is laughable. She literally said the other day, a baby in the womb should be as safe in the womb as they are in school. Oh, God forbid. Every pregnant woman was like, uh, oh, that, that, that's horrifying. You know, the, the threat to America is not Islam. It's not Sharia law. It's not Islamic law. It's Christian nationalism, okay? It's this very weird strain of right-wing, white-bred nationalist ideology. That's who stormed the Capitol, those people. That's what they believed. It's what Bannon preaches. You ever notice that while Bannon's preaching violence and hatred and taking away freedom and liberty from half the population, he's got a picture of Jesus behind him? You ever notice that? Yeah. That's in service to this perverse ideology that believes that God has chosen white men as stewards of this land to implement the kingdom of heaven on earth. Rachia. In America. That's crazy. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.